Hey everyone, this is Rob King with GoldSilverPros.com. It is Friday, March 12th, 2021. And we've been talking a lot over the last month about silver with the silver squeeze movement, Wall Street silver, the movement into silver and the precious metals in general. Then we followed that up with a lot of conversation over real estate, over bonds and general market economy. We haven't covered gold quite as much. So I wanted to focus today's Friday episode here on gold. Where are we with gold for the week? Where are we with gold for the month? And are we at the bottom? That's the big question we're going to try to answer today. Are we at the bottom of this correction in gold? Could we see potentially uh, accumulation or positive momentum building in the gold price for the rest of March? That's really what we're going to talk about. So let's go ahead and get it started. I'll jump right into the share. And we're going to start where we usually do, which is our stock chart chart here on gold price. Uh, we've been talking overall about this general move down. We had a move down from, uh, I'd say, late July through about December. And then we had a tick up in December as we expected into January. And then as we hit late January, early February, gold has come back down. And it's been, I think, a consolidation pattern because you can see a sharper drop here. But the overall trend line of the move down in gold has been kept. So in other words, we haven't reached lower lows in terms of the trend line here uh, overall in this consolidation pattern. So, and the fact that we have dropped off um, from that little rebound that we had December to early January, uh, but we've maintained this overall direction and gold tells me that we're not overall bullish in gold, meaning it's not free falling. We're not outside of the overall trend. And based upon this volume I'm seeing here in this part of the chart, on this movement down, it looks like consolidation to me. It looks like a lot of the, the shorts have been pushing down the price overall, but not enough to break the longs momentum or break the longs backs. This is basically the longs holding the overall trend line as the shorts tend to pile in here at the end. That to me says we could have some short side capitulation and maybe moving up into a long move in gold. Let's look at the overall chart, the long-term chart, going back about 12 to 13 years. Uh, this is what I always talk about. It's this cup and handle pattern. I've been talking about this since July of this year. And we had um, Florian Grimay on our August conference, Money Metal Summit 2020, talking about how he thought we could have a retracement. Um, let's see, we talked in August. So we were sitting right up here near the top in gold, a little bit less than the top in gold. And he was saying we could have a retracement back to 1700 potentially before we have the next bull move. I agreed with him that was definitely a possibility, but if that were to happen, it would form this cup and handle pattern. And what a cup and handle pattern is, for those who haven't been following me as closely the last couple of months, maybe new to the channel or, or maybe need a refresher, you have this cup pattern, which is an accumulation pattern. It's, it's a fall and then an accumulation right back up. And we, uh, two positive things about this. We exceeded the previous high of 1900. We went all the way up to about 2060, 2070 range on the rebound in the cup. And then we've fallen down into this handle pattern, but it's been within a range. You can see the downside range here basically has been maintained. And it's been in this sort of sideways 45 degree angle pattern. We're not straight down. We're not long sideways as if we're going to be in a very long term consolidation pattern. This is a short term consolidation pattern. People taking the profits overall from the highs and the consolidation of the next wave of the bull cycle, consolidation of those patterns. And you can see that here in the volume. It had a lot of volume going up, but the selling volume after the bullish volume has been a little bit lower. So there's been a little bit less volume, a little bit less participation on the downside than there was on the upside move. So that's bullish. The upside move got to a higher level than was the previous all-time high, which is bullish. And we've had this sort of sideways downward movement on slightly lower volume, which I think means the shorts are basically clearing out their positions. People are taking profits and we're setting up for the next bull run. That's sort of the technical analysis on the chart. Now I want to get to a bit of a shorter term view on the chart. We're going to zoom into about a year. And you can see what I'm talking about here. Here's the, the lower trend line has not been broken to the downside. We actually had a little bit of a rally as gold price came down back to this trend line for a, I want to say about a fourth time on the chart, fifth time on the chart, one, two, three, four, Five. So the fifth time it tested this downward trend line, it did not break through. That means we're not in a bearish market. 
And even though we've had a lot of selling here, a lot of sell off from about 1940 to about the low 1700s, uh, it again, it hasn't it hasn't popped back down through this trend line. Um, we are below the 50 and 200 day moving average. However, um, that doesn't really mean much. It means we're overall in a bearish correction, but it doesn't mean we're in a long term bear move until I see this trend line broken down here, this yellow line that I've drawn that started when gold was up at around its its all time high 2060 ish. Uh, until we see that bearish trend line broken, I'm not going to call a bear trend in gold. And I don't think it's a bear trend in gold for the fundamentals either. None of the fundamentals have changed. The money printing, the troubles with the fiat currency, the coming inflation, uh, the troubles in the bond market, so on and so forth. So overall, I'm still pretty bullish on gold. We'll go back to the long-term chart. It is in a very bullish pattern. That is the cup and the handle. And we're still within this trend line of the handle. So I don't think we've breached it to the bottom. And I think you saw right up here, I think you saw a move up in gold. Uh, the longs were trying to take control. The shorts won. They brought it sharply to the downside, but that was just a correction within the trend line so that we're not breaking the downward trend line. So just from that technical analysis perspective, I still think we're in the major bull of the gold market. I think this cup and handle, when it forms, it's always a bullish argument for the price to continue to go up or for the index to continue to go up. So I think we're going to continue to go up here because we haven't broken the overall trend line of the handle. We've formed the handle. We talked about it getting down to about 1700. That's about where it went. It went to the 1600s a little bit sort of temporarily before it rebounded. So overall, that's kind of what Florian and I, ta Florian and I talked about last August. That's exactly what's happened. So nothing outside the expectations of what we talked about four to five months ago. Now I want to talk about gold backwardation. Gold backwardation is when you have a higher spot price than a futures price. Generally, if you would expect the value of an asset um, to, to have some sort of positive value over time, meaning the futures price is going to be slightly higher than the spot price or what you're paying right now. And when that futures, when the spot price is over the futures price, that we call that being in backwardation. That means that people are that's a bullish sign for the market. Generally, when we go in backwardation, that means we're going to have a price forward and the market is signaling that in the short term price essentially is what that means. So gold spot right now, we're sitting at about 1703, 1704, and we're sitting futures and options, 170370. So they're almost equal. All this week, the spot price, what we see here in the XAU USD chart, uh, had been exceeding by about a dollar or so more than the future. So we have been hitting backwardation over and over again this week, although it's been really close, it'd be backwardation and then it would pop back up. The futures price would pop back up. It would be backwardation, the futures price would pop back up. It would be backwardation, the futures price would pop back up. And what that means is when you have the spot price higher than the futures price, it means there's more downside action in the futures market, but the people are holding steady on the spot. They're saying, no, 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 no. You know, we believe that the current price should be higher. And when that spot price is above the futures price, that's a, that's a bullish sign. So it's been kind of teasing it a little bit this week. And you can see it on the chart, 1704 now, 1703. So again, we have a backwardation at this very moment, 1704 spot price is higher than the 1703 as reported on the futures market in COMEX. And it's been teasing that basically all week. So that is another potentially bullish sign. Now it's not a huge bullish sign, the fact it's hit backwardation because it's hit backwardation before uh, on the downward trend. But if it stays in backwardation for any length of time, and we look at other signs and indicators that we're in a bull market, uh, including the fantastic fundamental indicators, which all indicate that we should continue the bull market, then I think that that is a positive sign. So, you know, not the strongest backwardation, but backwardation nonetheless. The next thing I wanted to look at was the overall uh, caught report for gold. So this is the latest report off the CFTC's website. This is the commitment of traders uh, data through March 2nd, of course. We're at, uh, what are we at, March 12th, so we should get data any day now on the March 2nd through March 12th data, but we're going to look, we're just going to review this chart for gold here, and what we're seeing is a little bit of capitula capitulation by the swap dealers on their short position, so if you look at the total changes all across this line here, and then you go up to swap dealers where my cursor is here, they've released, uh, as of March 2nd, 24,000 contracts to the short side. They've reduced their, their positions 24,000 swap dealers, the bullion banks. 
And essentially what that means is they're trying to drop as many shorts as possible. They're going to have relatively speaking in past history over the past you know, six, seven years, their short position is starting to approach uh, lows. So they're reducing short significantly when compared with uh, previous periods. And that may, may be a sign if they're capitulating some of their short positions and they, they expect overall as a group of those swap dealers, the bullying banks for the price to rise. Um, that's not conclusive in and of itself, but when you add it to the overall technical analysis we did here on the chart, we have this, we think the ending of the cup and handle pattern, or at least getting close to the ending where we're going to have the next move up from a technical perspective, we have the backwardation between the spot and the overall uh, futures price. And we have some capitulation in terms of the shorts or the bullion banks, which are usually the biggest shorts in the market for gold. Uh, and they're trying starting to reduce their position. Overall, those are all bullish signs. So we definitely want to pay attention to it. One other thing I wanted to, to pull your attention to is the March bank participation report. This is where they, the CFTC provides data on the banks themselves and how they're doing in the overall, uh, the overall markets. And we're gonna go look for gold here real quick. So here's CMX gold. And you can see it's about 122, 123,000 contracts. These are the um, shorts and longs. They have long 51, short 174. So they're only short net net about the banks about 120, was that 123-ish or so, which is a pretty low number in terms of, of bank participation, in terms of shorts over longs. Take the shorts minus the longs. What's the net net position? Uh, that's a fairly low number. It's lowest it's been uh, in a number of years, probably dating back, I want to say 2014, 2015. I have to go back and, and look at the historical data. But overall, again, specifically with the banks, both from the, the long firm form version of the COT report and specifically the bank participation report, both from the CFTC, the banks are reducing their overall short positions. They could be positioning for a long move. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to talk about here, I wanted to get into the options. I Well, before we do the options, let's go ahead and go back over to um, the futures position. Then we'll get into options here in a moment. Overall, what we're saying, another Another sign that maybe there's not a whole lot of gold on this HEMI group and that we're in a bullish market is the EFP exchange for fiscal, which is where you take your COMEX futures position, you go over to London and you get exposure to their OTC market. There are more of those trades, 2,510, than there are the actual fiscal deliveries on COMEX. That to me is a bullish sign. It means that there's very healthy and robust uh, delivery numbers for uh, or physical demand for gold but that they're not finding all the physical that they need on the COMEX. So they're having to jump over from the COMEX to the London market. London market, of course, is unallocated. So just because they're putting a position over there in London, you're getting exposure, doesn't mean you're actually getting the metal. But the fact that all of these contracts are moving over and there's more of them pretty much on a daily basis, moving to London, searching for that gold means there's more stateside demand for these big uh, gold contracts, 100 ounce gold contracts then there is available supply on the COMEX. I don't even care what the, the, the depository numbers are. So they're having to go overseas to get it. So there's more demand than there is supply. That is bull for physical, and that is bullish for gold moving forward as well. And I think one thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go look for the deliveries report. I didn't bring it up originally, but the, The deliveries is, is a very important report because I think we've had very, very healthy deliveries this month. So we're going to look on the, let's look on the monthly and let's blow this up just a little bit so we can see it better. So if we go to gold, here's gold futures. We started off the month with a bang. Of course, you can take, you can put in your notice of intent if you're along to take delivery uh, two business days before the first trading day of the month. So in other words, you could do it the last couple of days of February before March. So the very first day, 2,531. And now we're up to a cumulative total of 8,210 gold <clears throat> contracts. And what is a relatively speaking weak delivery month in gold? Because you look at where most of the futures positions are there in April. April really is the big open interest month for gold, but we're seeing deliveries. You see only 309 open interest contracts in March, but they're taking delivery in March 1735. That means more people are coming in and taking spot delivery of gold right off of this market uh, instead of uh, exercising the bigger futures month in April. 
when you have more fiscal deliveries here, 1735, than you have open interest, that means uh, people are essentially coming in and they're taking delivery in that month. And of course you see some roll here, 1726, roll to the next month, uh, open interest, but a lot more deliveries here than there were open interest. Of course, some of these will be the closed fiscal delivery position. Some of it's rolling uh, to future months. It looks like June is starting to build up. There's 14,000 more contracts building up in June, but very interesting to see very healthy deliveries in a month, which there wasn't a whole lot of open interest. There's only about 2000 open interest. You had 1735 deliveries. That's not normal, like from a percentage basis. From a percentage basis, the deliveries overall are a small fraction of the open interest. It's very strong in March. And that means that people are really standing for delivery. And that's when we go back to the EFPs. They're not getting all that delivery. So we're having very healthy exchange for fiscal numbers with people then seeking the gold over in the London market. So that's the futures. Again, that's very bullish, I think, that we're having in, in, a, in a relatively you know, weak month of open interest in March, we're having a lot of deliveries, so much that a lot of that has to then go over to London searching for that gold exposure as well. And now I wanted to get in the options because I did a little bit of an options analysis to see where people are positioning. And I think that's very interesting. Usually I look at the futures because that's the closest thing to determining the what you're going to have as a spot price. The futures trade very closely if you look at the settlements. So I look at the futures a lot, but I look at the options also because this is where you could make money. Let's say you had a, a put on gold in, in a falling gold price environment, and it was at a price slightly lower than gold, and you, you hit that put and you become in the money with that put option. Um, that's how you can make a lot of money. So looking at the puts and the calls, the calls would be the long bets, the puts would be the short bets on the market, will tell you where the traders are positioning. And so when the price moves to a certain point, is how many traders will make money. We'll also look at the overall open interest there as well. So let's get into this. So essentially what you have to do is you have to download the data from the CME group. So I just downloaded the call data and put it on a call option tab here. And then I downloaded the put data and put it on a, a put, at, put uh, tab here in Excel. Then I did some pivot tables and charts, which I'll show you here in a minute. The, one, the first thing that I want to note is that there are way more puts on gold right now than there are calls. So in the options market, you have 862, 8,622 puts and calls, you have 5,795. That means more people are bearish gold from an options perspective, from options trading perspective than are bullish. And that's because if we go back to the gold chart, we were in that correction. So that makes sense. When you're in a correction, the options traders are gonna follow, uh, they're gonna follow that trend and they're gonna make their they're going to take their options accordingly. So it makes more sense in a correction environment for us to have more puts. But now we start getting into detail. So all of this data that I graphed out and played around with, I've got basically four charts for you. Uh, we're going to look overall first at just the volume change in the options, very recent volume change. And then we're going to look at total open interest. So these two charts, the blue chart is the call option movement. The red chart is the put option movement. Again, you can see more higher, you can see higher numbers in the puts than you can see in the calls, meaning people are continuing their bearish bets for the, on the option trading on the gold market. Uh, and I kind of did this like a sideways uh, bell curve. Uh, I, I started with low prices on the calls and moved high. Uh, did the same thing on the puts. started with low prices, moved high. And, and if you turn this over sideways, you get sort of a bell curve. So most of the action on the long side of the options market is a price of a strike price of 1750. And then you have another healthy strike price of 1725. Uh, and then you have some at 1725. So as gold's trading around 1700 ish right now, some of these will be in the money. 351 options essentially will be in the money. You could get another 527 at, at uh, when gold hits 1725. You get another 1000 when gold hits 1750, so on and so forth. That's basically how to read. Uh, an options chart here. Although CME Group doesn't chart this for you, you got to do all of this stuff yourself. And I just took the largest numbers. So there are definitely, um, there are other strike prices that have data on them. If you look at the chart, it goes all the way from 1200, uh, scroll all the way to the bottom here to 4,000 uh, on the calls. And I think it's going to be basically the same on the puts. Yeah, basically the same on the puts. You've got 975 to 3,800. So you've got more data there, but what I did was I just took, you know, the top, top numbers. So anything that had 
more than a certain amount of positions because there are lots of strike prices have very little baby amounts, but they don't overall affect, you know, how overall the traders are positioned. So I just looked at the, the heaviest positions, if you will. So that's basically the call side. And the largest single position is about 999 at a strike price of 1750. Now, if we look over here on the put side, the red chart, the biggest position is 1700. So all of these basically are in the money when gold dips below 1700. So people at some point in time in the past took a strike price on this put of $1,700. Gold is sitting right at that $1,700 line. So that's why $1,700 line has been a big battle because you have all these traders, 1,610 of them, as a matter of fact, wanting to come into the money. Uh, all of these people below this line at a price of 1730, 25, 2015, they've already won. They're already in the money. They're just waiting uh, you know, for this basically to take their money or they can move out of this position now. They're in the money. Uh, all of these people stand to gain if gold stays below 1700. And the farther it stays below 1700, the more you'll make on the option. And the next big level is 1675. You have another 843 options there at 1675 and another 1359 at 1650. So if you want to get really bearish and call a downside price in gold, uh, just looking at the options chart, you'd say about 1650 because there are about 650 options right now, contracts that are thinking gold could get down to 1650 on the downside. Now, will it? I don't think it will. I don't think these people will be in the money and I don't think they'll make money there. But at the end of the day, there's a big bet here. And again, these numbers, all of these numbers, the 1700 price level, the 1675, the 1650 are, are all essentially larger. Well, two of them are larger than the largest position in, in the call. So Again, more total downside positioning in the options market than there is upside positioning that tells you where traders' heads are at. Now, it's also interesting, this is just recent change. In other words, as, as gold falls, more and more people are taking these lower options. Okay, this is just the recent movement. This is not the overall positioning. Um, if we look at overall position, I put this here on just a, a sideways bar chart. Where we see the positioning in the puts, we'll start there first. The downside action, they're looking anywhere from 1650 to 1750, about a hundred dollar price range. And most of those are now in the money if gold stays below 1700. Um, you have some people stand to gain 1675, 1650, like we saw on the chart up here. So the overall open interest is still bearish as most of these positions, well, at least half of the positions here to the right would stand to gain money, but the ov overall half of these are already in the money. And depending on when people put their options in, you know, how much they're in the money. If we look at the calls, if we look at the, the bulls, then it, it's a completely different chart. You've got these people in the money. And then most of the rest of the positions are leading up to about 2350. Starts at 1725 all the way up to 2350. So a lot of the, the, the bull options traders are, are not in the money. Most of them are positioned out of the money. They're waiting on the gold price to rise. But there is a significant bet all the way up to 2350. That's the other all over way to look at it. And this is why you see <clears throat> a lot of uh, positive thoughts on the overall long-term price of gold. If everybody thought that gold was con continued to free fall, you wouldn't see the entire long side of the chart. The majority of the long positions line up like this way. You wouldn't see the majority of those 5,000 contracts line up, you know, to the left side of basically this is the profit line here, 1,700. There are smaller positions over here below 1,700 but it's a very small percentage of the market. Most of the market on the long side is above the current price. So definitely some traders are looking to see some long-term price momentum, but they're outnumbered by the shorts. The shorts are the strongest area of the market right now. So people are betting on the price to continue to fall. That's essentially what we see in the options data. I don't analyze the options data too, too much because, um, you know, it, the option is, um, it doesn't really determine the overall price, although depending on how the futures trade goes, you could become in the money, depending on the movement and what position you took in the options market. And I suspect a lot of the bullion banks also play around in the options. In fact, we know they do play around the options market. So for example, if they want to dump a huge amount of shorts into the market or a huge amount of longs uh, to influence the market, that could bring them in the money with the options market, depending on how they're positioned over there. I've talked about this one other time before, but that's sort of potentially a uh, setting the market up to do what you want. If you can use the futures to manipulate the price, then you can put yourself in the money on your call or put options, depending on you know where the trend is overall in the gold price 
and you know where you're positioned in that. So that's another way uh, that a large player in the market, whether it be bullion banks or moneyed financial interests, can influence the market. You take a large futures position, you actually move the market based on that futures position, and then you, you're in the money on your actual trade on the options as well. So that's why I wanted to call out the options. It's sort of a secondary thing that I, that I look at because it doesn't drive price as much, but it, it, they are points at which people could make money depending on where the price goes and, and the price is more determined by the overall futures trade. So that is my analysis of gold. Overall, from a fundamental perspective, I'm bullish almost across the board. We have really low interest rates. We still have, from a real interest rate perspective, uh, negative interest rates. So that's bullish for gold, even though the 10-year treasury went up to about 1.6%. Oh, I don't even know what, what it's at right now, but in the last week, it was like 1.6%. Uh, overall, that's just one treasury issuance. The whole treasury complex hasn't moved up. So I'm <clears throat> contending that we are still overall in a negative real interest rate environment, net net of everything. Um, I also think the amount of spending that's going on right now, uh, the fact that the economy hasn't reflated from the shutdowns last year, different states are opening up. We've only had a couple really open up all the way. A lot of the others are doing more restrictive measures. Uh, you have the <clears throat> US administration putting in more restrictive measures. Uh, due to the uh, or doing more restrictive measures on shutdowns. I think overall, if you look at the amount of debt and particularly negative interest rate debt across the world, uh, that's very bullish for gold. I think if you look at overall spending, that's very bullish for gold. And now we get into some of the technicals and the actual details around the trading of the gold market. We're still in that short term correction mode in uh, the gold chart. Let's get back to that here real quickly. I want to go back to the gold chart. And we're going to end by looking at the gold chart. We're in this capitulation, the short-term capitulation, but this is a consolidation pattern, which is very bullish for gold's next move up. Of course, we've had some backwardation. We've seen the banks, remember, from both the COT report and specifically the uh, bankers' participation report, they have both started uh, reducing their overall shorts, which tells me they may be positioning long. And since they're the biggest group of people that go short this market and have the most downside influence on the market, if they're now positioning to go long, what we could be seeing is a signal that the bull is going to hit its next bull run. Now, we need to see some of those options reflect that as well. We still have many more put options uh, on the market than we have call options. Most of the call options are positioned long, which could mean that as a percentage, more of the bulls expect the market to rise than do the shorts, but there are still a lot of short options there. So I'm looking at the options as sort of a tertiary or last indicator of the positioning of the banks and the, and the big money and interest in the market. I haven't seen the options really flip to the long side. So there's about another 3,000 contracts that need to be affected there, at least in uh, the April data. By the way, that was April options data. So we'll look at the April data. We may start paying attention, you know, to to the June data here, the options data here, pretty soon. Um, but overall, it looks like factors are lining up for the next bull run of the gold market. Both fundamental has been there. The technicals and the trader positioning is starting to move there. It's not quite there, so we could continue to see some some sideways or downward movement in gold. But I think we're near the end. I think we're set up for where, you know, you look at it from a deliveries perspective. They don't have enough metal. It's moving to London. People are starting to figure that out. Traders are starting to position all of the physical buying that the retail market has been doing and the commercial side of the market has been doing from a physical perspective has now basically drained a lot of liquidity from the system. So all of those factors point to, <clears throat> excuse me, us entering the next stage of the bull market. Now, really the big catalyst for the big move up in gold, I have said over and over, it's going to be a big debt default or trouble in the banking system, either a black swan, gray swan, something that that says, hey, Houston, we really have a problem. We haven't had that yet. So I'm gonna be fairly conservative in my gold bullish call here. If something like that breaks, Katie, bar the door. We could have you know, a, you know, three or $400 moving gold very easily. But for now, I think we're just at the end of the capitulation of the short or the short-term correction in gold. We're gonna to start to move bullish. And then I'm gonna wait for that signal that something big is gonna break in the banking system and the debt system. Uh, for us to have the big move in gold. That's what I'm looking for next. But good news for the gold crowd. I think we're nearing the end of this little correction here that we've had in gold, this healthy correction. And I think we're about to start our uh, next bull phase. So if you're accumulating, 
you may want to continue to make your last purchases in gold here at the bottom. I think we're pretty close to the bottom, at least overall speaking. And I think we're about to start the upside move. So if you're also positioning in the gold miners, now is a good time. Uh, if uh, that's what you want to do, of course, I'm not your financial planner. We'll do that disclaimer here. Please don't use this as trading advice. I'm not responsible for that. I'm not a licensed financial planner. Conduct, uh, consult your own financial planner and all your decisions are your own. But based upon the data I see, I think gold's going to start to move up. The gold miners are always behind that. So you have a little bit more time to position in the miners than you do the actual metal prices. But start looking at companies that you think you'll be interested in. I'll be profiling another one here either Sunday or Monday for you that I think is potentially very interesting in terms of their overall reserves. So pay attention to that if you want to get into the actual gold stocks. And I think we're going to be very bullish on the gold stocks, although that will lag the gold price a little bit because you kind of have to have the gold price move up and sustain it a little while. And then it has to hit the balance sheets or the profit, uh, the basically the statement of cash flows and income of these companies for for the companies to follow. So there could be anywhere from you know 30 day to 60 day lag in, in the miners, but the miners will go up, gold will go up first, the miners will follow. So you still have some time to position in the miners, but you may be running out if, you, if you're looking at making a big change in your portfolio into the miners, you may wanna start considering that. Now, again, coming either this Sunday or Monday, I'll release a report on a new company that I have uh, some interest in. And uh, we'll look at that one for you guys as, as one of uh, your potential targets. Okay, until next time, this is Rob Keen, so goldsoverpros.com.